this book. <clears throat> Don Victor here for episode 17. Can you believe it's 17 already? Man, 17. Well, wanted to uh, get this uh, show on the road because uh, in 40 minutes we have our one of our weekly meetups uh, for the Core 80. So we're going to be going over some work that they did this week, giving some uh, feedback, some critique, because that's how we roll. Yeah, if you want to be part of the Core 80, reach out to me, and uh, we'll get you set up, we'll get you started. But uh, today's show is inspired by two wonderful, amazing, beautiful women, both... Um, Negra Pelos, one uh, out of Canada, the other out of Portugal. So, Catherine, this one is for you because you said you liked Caravaggio, and you also said that you liked Bernini, which happens to be one of my very favorite artists, right up there with Norman Rockwell, and I'm going to tell you why today. Uh, and for Sammy, um, since you kind of got me thinking about head and heart, this is a great, great video that talks about the two and how uh, in art we can compose with our head or we can compose with our heart. You still can be a great composer, but it's interesting how we can tap into these different sources. So. On that note, let us get into the artwork. Oops. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So we're going to look at a Caravaggio painting today. <clears throat> we are also going to look at a Bernini painting, a uh, sculpture. And what I want to talk about between the two of these artisans is... That in both of these paintings, I mean, both uh, in the painting and the sculpture, uh, in both of these artworks, the commission had to communicate a, con a divine connection, okay? So in the Caravaggio painting, there is a connection uh, here. This is St. Peter, I mean, St. Paul on the way to Damascus, and he has this um, encounter, this divine encounter. He gets knocked off of his horse. He goes blind. And Caravaggio depicts this as Caravaggio depicts almost always the presence of God as an external source, an external light. And there's a reason why he does that. See, Caravaggio wasn't what we would call a believer. He was really, really good at his craft. He was really, really good at storytelling. But when it came to depicting um, the engagement or the interaction with God, he would often use the presence of light shining onto a subject to represent the presence of the divine. Okay? So it was always an external uh, experience, you know, or stimulus that came from the outside in or on top of, of the person. Bernini, on the other hand, when he creates a divine experience, like in this sculpture... Uh, the ecstasy of St. Teresa. His experience, um, the way he communicates the experience with the divine is not from an external source, but from an internal awakening. So a lot of times in his sculptures, the women look like they're having an orgasm because it is this experience, this ecstasy of connecting with the divine, but it's, it's uh, an expression from the inside out. And 
So let's take a look at the sculpture here. As our eye flows up, look at the, the way that the cloth looks. For many years, I always thought this was the moment between, right before Cupid pl plucks her uh, in, the, in the heart with the, um, with the arrow. But I don't think it is anymore. I think it is when he actually he finished plucking her and he pulled it out. And the reason why is if you look at the major thrust of this image, it is bringing us on a Baroque angle. Okay, um, he's the dominant vertical, Cupid, drawing us down to the bottom of where her feet is. The eye travels up on this Baroque up towards her head, but then as it gets close to her head, it quickly turns and is pulled out, like where her heart is, it pulls us out into Cupid, up through his arm, his uh, little wing. Look at the, the clothes of Cupid, like the outfit that, that he's wearing, okay? Same thing, it brings us up towards the face, her face, and then it, it quickly turns and raptures us out of it, okay? And the fact that it's all of these lines are pulling us out, pulling us from Teresa to into the divine. The arrow, I believe, has actually been pulled out. And this is maybe why the expression of Cupid is like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> I love, uh, let me see if I can get into a close up here real quick. Um, oh, don't tell me I just messed that up. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if I can get a close up here. Look at the delicateness of Cupid's hands. He's not aggressive, he just has this very gentle touch. And if you look at the way he's touching that, and then you look at her face. That's that's pretty intense, right? So Bernini, what's interesting is they say that Bernini, he would use his wife um, as his model. And uh, where Caravaggio, on the other hand, was known to use uh, prostitutes. Oops, hold on one second. Prostitutes... Um, for his models, and obviously, he wasn't just paying them for uh, their services as a muse. Um, and so, the two different the, the guys had different relationships with the divine. They had different relationships just with themselves and life and women, and we can see, you know, that come out in their artwork, which I think is just fascinating. So when we look at Caravaggio's painting of St. Paul and we look at how he depicts the divine, we can see that what he does is he actually could, this is brilliant what he does. He, he constructs this three-dimensional sphere and just places it right inside of that area, that space of where Paul's hands are up and the horse's legs and the man's legs and, and all that stuff. So... When, when you look at that, now you can see like it's almost like an invisible ball of light that's just plopped right down in, in that space. I mean, this, <laughs> this is brilliant, the way he's communicated this story, except for the simple fact that his concept of God and, and the divine and this whole experience is always an external stimulus a light from the outside shining in rather than a light coming from within and it's interesting because when it comes to religion or spirituality love art so much of it we can approach it from a head head perspective which limits it because all, all we're then doing is experiencing it from taste, sight, what we hear, you know, sound, touch, smell. We're just we're just experiencing it on that Newtonian level. 
we're only we're only creating on that Newtonian level, meaning the the level uh, where where everything is just basically based on physics, what you can physically hear and physically see and physically touch. And so, therefore, in Caravaggio's approach, he's he's approaching it from that from that perspective where it's like, you know, we need to be touched by this light. Where Bernini is using it, coming to it from a very different perspective, he's using more of a quantum approach, which breaks, which goes beyond just sight, sound, and, and, and touch, and smell, and, and taste. It goes beyond that. And it gets much more into, like, a transportation, I mean, you're, you're trans it somewhere and then the experience is happening within you and then it comes out of you and uh, and that's much more of a, a living by the heart versus living by the by the mind where the mind uh, not so the mind but the head let's say that the head will often look for the constraints in things it will often look for the uh, the fear in things uh, the concerns in things um, it's much more pessimistic, uh, mystic, um, where the heart tends to be far more optimistic. It's much more freeing. It's much more full of love and expanding. A lot of times, if I have to make a decision in life, um, well, on a daily basis, you know, if if I start, if I'm starting to worry or get concerned, or I'm afraid I'm going to get hurt, or any of these types of emotions start popping up, I know that I'm in my head. And when I am, uh, and so I need to then trigger myself out of that to get back into my heart so that I can just be one. I can be expansive. I can be big. Um, I can be fearless and victorious. And that's, for me, the difference between living in my head versus living in my heart it's also what helps me create stories, right? So when we're looking at work we, and we have that sensitivity, we're able to spot these things in other people, in other artwork. Um, and let me just pop these guys over to the side here so we can have them both. You can see the, the two side by side. Just, just, I mean, they're both beautiful pieces. Now, the Bernini sculpture on the on the one hand, I am not convinced that Bernini actually created the rays of light that are coming down onto her. I, I'm almost convinced that that was something probably added after after the fact, and it wasn't he who added it. I do not know that for a fact. If somebody does know that if there was a difference in the time in which the sculpture was put there and the radiating light from above, because that's a that's much more of a Caravaggio type of thinking that there's this external light, this light from above, you know, coming out of the sky. Bernini was heavens within. You're having that experience, and it's going to come out of you not come on you and um, and so I'm not purely convinced it, it just doesn't feel right in terms of as a designer uh, those vertical all those diagonals coming from above down onto it just and then you look at the piece and the design of the sculpture it kind of clashes it really just does it doesn't work properly so uh, it'll be interesting to to do some research on that but this is what I wanted to show you today. Uh, let, let me go ahead and, and, and bring in, oops, just, just so you can see both of these next to each other as well. Because I want you guys to begin to understand how design works. You can see there's two totally different approaches to the design. Again, if you're in the mind, what happens is you feel constricted, you feel weight, you feel uh, boxed in, closed in. Interestingly enough, this is the approach that 
Caravaggio uses. He draws this fear, and it's it's just this heavy weight on you. And when you're living from the heart, it's freeing, it's open, it's orgasmic, it's life giving. Uh, it's pleasure. It's it's fun. You're breathing. The one on you know Saint Paul ain't breathing. He got something heavy on his chest. He can't breathe. So here is Caravaggio and Bernini. Here is head and heart. Here is external divine experience depicted versus internal divine experience depicted. Both brilliant composers, both brilliant artists, both brilliant men just approaching life from two different ends. And I, I kind of like the way that that rhymed at the end again. Oh, shoot. I did it again. Well, again. Stop it. <laughs> All right, guys. That is episode 17. Do share it. You know what you're supposed to do. Share it. I'm providing this information for free every day for 100 days. Apologize that my hair isn't as wonderful as it normally is. But in a hundred days, you're going to see my hair wonderful, and sometimes you're not. So it is what it is. Um, but uh, share this video with your art friends. If you know art collectors, investors, share it with them too, because they're the ones paying for art, right? And this information is going to open up their, the vaults that are hanging on their walls that they may not even know the richness that they have. Sometimes this information will reveal that they made some really bad decisions too. And they wasted a lot of money. So my goal uh, in doing all of this is not only to cultivate brilliant, profound artists, but it's also to cultivate and educate collectors and investors and buyers of art so that they, they know what they're buying. And when they can uh, get this language, just like the authors and the buyers, that meaning the, meaning the artists and, and the buyers, um, and the public who reads it, when you can make work at this level, when you can understand work at this level, when you can read it, and then you go and you look at work, you know, uh, you go to a museum and you begin to analyze it and experience it from a whole nother perspective. You get very intimate with those artists who created those things. And then when you go back to your studio, you can create in that same idiom, in that same vibration, in that same understanding. And you will feel c connected to these artists like you've never felt before. I don't care how many books you've read. I don't really care how many museums you went to or how much artwork you saw. I can take an illiterate man and put him in the biggest library. Or I can take one man who can read and put him in front of one book. Get what I'm saying? So we need to become visual, uh, visually literate, both as the makers of art and the lovers of art. And that's why I do what I do, because I want to raise the consciousness of those who are making the art and those who are loving it and even buying it, investing in it, supporting it. Okay? I want a world... I have a dream. It's much more of a vision than a dream, but let's just say I have a vision where artists, the public, and the patrons are all on the same page. That's ultimately what I'm building towards. So the first thing we need to do is speak the language. And the language is design. All right? On that note, 
I will see you guys tomorrow. And Core 80, get your butts ready. I'm going to see you in 20 minutes. We have our uh, Sunday meetup. And um, get ready for a great time. Arrivederci. Ciao.